Hi guys. Friday again. Yes, I didn't manage to put a video up last week because I was having quite a bad flare up last week and I had multiple things going on and sometimes life's just a little bit too hectic to be able to do things you want to do so that's why I didn't that's why you didn't see me around last week guys but I'm okay now. <laughs> this week I wanted to talk a little bit about anxiety and depression because it's not an easy subject but the thing is it's mental awareness month and I just feel that it's a really good time to actually openly talk about it because it's not an easy thing to admit that you're suffering with depression or anxiety because it can be seen as a sign of weakness and it's really not it's just one of those things you don't know what it's like until you've lived with it yourself and I didn't used to be too bad until sort of the start of my diagnosis things really started picking up a lot and even now I still have really bad days where I just want to cry all day and that's all I will do even adverts just <laughs> can bring on tears and it's it's a horrible way to live but it's something that can't necessarily be helped um, I've just got one or two little tips that can maybe help out during those really rough times and just try and help you feel a bit better about things so the first one I would say is try to be more active it doesn't necessarily mean go out and have a run it can also just mean just getting out and socializing even if it's at a slow pace just getting out of the, the house or wherever you spend all your time just get out of that space for a while and get some fresh air sit in the garden I quite like doing that if I'm having a really bad day I'll force myself to go and sit in the garden with the dog for half an hour and it does make a big difference because as much as you just want to lie there with the duvet over your head and all the lights out and all the curtains closed it doesn't help you it doesn't make you feel any better than you felt before um, it is also recommended that taking up sort of light exercise obviously again with the fibromyalgia the two kind of don't necessarily go too well together but I've um, treated myself to one of the little pedal exercises and just 10 minutes on that really steady I've been doing a day and I just find it's really quite a nice little way to still do something that I used to enjoy because I'm not allowed on a normal pedal bike at the moment my physiotherapist isn't happy for that to happen and I used to love my bike I as soon as it was sunny I would I'd be out there straight away and it's just not an option at the moment but we've come to a compromise and I've got my little step my pedal step thing and it's brilliant I absolutely love it and not only that you sat down so you can do it even while you're watching telly it's something that just makes you feel a little bit better about yourself when you're feeling down so I found that really helps if you've got a particular exercise you like try and find a way of adapting it so that it's really light like yoga is a really good one in terms of fibromyalgia and stuff because it's not as tough as saying say going to like an aerobics class so find something that you enjoy and like I say just adapt it to how you can deal with it and how it, and to the sort of level that won't hurt you any more than you already do another way to deal with anxiety and depression is facing up to your fears now this one is so much harder to do than it is to say and I know for myself personally when I'm having a really bad anxiety day if I don't have to go out I will avoid it like the plague and the thing is it, it only builds that fear up so if you sort of set it up into little stages where you know even if it's phone someone on a day when you're afraid of hanging around with people just phone someone have a phone conversation with that person and you've still been social you've still tried to do it but you don't necessarily have to go all the way out and meet them it's not a healthy way to live because it can make your confidence just drop really low and it gets harder and harder to overcome that anxiety every time it happens like I know there's the saying saying do one thing a day that scares you <laughs> and there's some days that I'm just getting out of my bedroom scares me but there will be days you will not be able to fight it and you will just stay in your little cave and that's okay that's allowed but it's also worth just really trying to push yourself a little bit and just face that fear ever so slightly even if you do it in stages and build up to actually going somewhere on your own because I had to do that a few months back I was really bad I'd I wouldn't go anywhere if I wasn't with my other half or a friend like I wouldn't nip into town no matter how desperately I needed it I would wait 
until someone could go with me or I would order things online and I had to slowly start increasing where I'd go so I started by just going across the road to the little corner shop eventually I built it up because there were appointments and things that I had to get to when people couldn't be with me and I didn't want that anxiety to be so extreme that I was ill or didn't go because these were appointments I have to attend and they will help me in the long run um, so yeah just r try really hard to battle it because it just gets harder to fight if not I've found um, another one that is also recommended is don't drink too much which <laughs> If you're anything like me, that isn't very often anyway, due to medication, but I have found that no, I've never particularly been one of these people where when I'm having a bad time I think I need to have a drink to calm myself down, that's never really helped me, but I know there are people that do do that and you have to be really careful because you run the risk of becoming reliant on that numbness from alcohol that can be caused and again it's not healthy for you physically or mentally because it actually doesn't make the depression any better it just makes it harder to deal with or you might not deal with certain problems you're having in a rational or sensible way and yeah the health risks as well of doing things like that is just too much to outbalance not having a drink I think myself personally. One of the biggest things that I've found has helped is having a routine because when, during a really bad bout of depression I found I sleep really badly worse than normal and your brain is just constantly on the go and it's it's just non-stop you can't escape it it can come and pounce at you anytime you can be feeling absolutely fine and then all of a sudden it's like someone's put this coat on you that is just so heavy you can't take it off and I found that by having a bit of a routine it means that even when I'm not at my best, I know there's certain things I have to do so I will make a point of getting up in the day. Even if I can't leave the room I will get up and stretch my legs for a little bit and just do something for 10 minutes to half an hour depending on how bad the flare up is along with the depression as well. And not only that, at night time I have a similar routine like I will take my tablets at a set time. I mean. The routine doesn't just affect things like sleeping, it affects things like your meals because I know myself that when I'm particularly depressed I really don't want to eat. I've got two extremes, I either don't want to eat anything, I constantly feel sick and don't want to eat food at all and the other extreme of course is I cannot eat enough, I full on comfort eating. I put my hands up to that, I am definitely guilty of comfort eating. Um, you know it's it's really odd you can't plan how your ba brain and body are going to react to it it's different every single time but all i can say is that if you are going through a stage where you don't particularly want to eat much i've found that one of the ways i've sort of still got my vitamin intake is by getting like the protein shakes like the slimming shakes that you have that are all like meal replacement drinks and I'll just have one of them because it's ready you just have to pick it up drink it and it's it's done and I st at least that way I know I'm still getting what my body needs but I haven't necessarily got to force myself to sit and eat a massive meal um I wouldn't recommend you do that all day every day for like weeks on end but every once in a while I don't have any problems with doing that at all um if, you don't, if you're not a fan of those kind of drinks, I'd just set an alarm and even if you force yourself to eat just so you can take your tablets, as long as you have something in the day, it, you know, at least you know you've had a little something and you're not going to end up feeling a lot worse for it. And if you're over it and just if there's people around you just say, look, stop me. I have to do that. I have to move all crap food away from me because if not I will empty it out I will eat it all and it's really greedy and it's really bad <laughs> but it's just how the brain works it just seems to make you think you feel better as soon as you feel that disappearing you feel like eating again and it doesn't help at all you just get bigger <laughs> definitely realizing that way too late but that's another story and my final bit of advice as well is just to be honest about the fact that you are depressed and seek help for it because you don't want to get to the extreme where you're doing stupid things to hurt yourself or try and end it all because there's so much more 
it's worth living for then your brain will make you think there is and it's it's tricky to deal with i mean i've not been too too bad i've been i've not like been to the extreme of depression where i felt like jumping off a bridge or anything like that but certainly i will sit there and the thoughts of well what's the point you know if anything happened who would notice all those negative horrible thoughts and again you can't stop them it's just a way that a brain is wired it happens from time to time but talk to people about it if you're if you have another half or whichever tell them that you're feeling bad tell them that you're not yourself tell your friends and family if you need to it's not an easy thing to admit like, i know when i first started suffering with the depression side of things I did not want to tell my family that I was on medical help for it at all. I don't know why, I just felt ashamed about it. And it was ridiculous. Whereas now, now that I've told them, it's not so much like a dirty secret anymore. And yeah, they don't necessarily understand it because they haven't necessarily been in that place themselves mentally, but they're there for me. And my other half is fantastic. Like. If I'm having a really bad day, I don't even have to say anything anymore. She just knows what's going on and it will be a case of, can I get you anything? Can I help? And even if it's just a case of me saying, no, but thanks for asking, you know that there's people there that care for you. And as much as you tell yourself no one is bothered about you and all this when the horrible depression is kicking off, trust me, there are a lot of people around you that worry about you. They might not say anything, but... There really will be people in your life that care more than you think. Um, not just that, if, you, if you're not on medical help for it, I would highly recommend seeing a doctor about it. I'm, I myself am on antidepressants and I know when I've not had them. There is a massive difference, like my patience level, my anxiety, everything changes completely. Like if I don't take them, it's it's just like this cloud is hanging over me all the time and it doesn't matter what I do to shift it I could be at the happiest event and I could just sit there without an expression at all on my face and the whole time I'm thinking why aren't I enjoying myself and it's a constant battle between your brain like your good side and your bad side and there's nothing worse than that it's it's really not nice to go through but like I say, I spoke to my doctor about it, I got put on medication and as soon as I did that, it started to make a difference almost straight away. Um, the only thing I would say, obviously it varies from different medications, but I know a lot that I've been put on. The first two weeks they say is worse than once they kick in because it has to build up in your body and you definitely, if there are any side effects, that's when you're going to feel them because it's all new to your system and you have to take them every day if you miss one you have to start again so it's again if you watched my fibro fog video i said about my medicine box set it up so you know they're in there and you're going to be taking them um because it's they really does make a difference it just takes that level off a bit don't get me wrong i still have days where i'm really bad for anxiety or depression or both um but generally I have more better days than I do worse days since taking medication for it. And again, if you don't want to tell people about it, that that's what you're on, that's completely up to you. I myself have sort of got myself out of that so that it doesn't feel like this little secret. It just It's just another part of my fibromyalgia. And that's how I see it now, rather than it being a big thing that I don't want people to know about. There are sort of talking therapy groups you can find through your doctor as well. It all depends on where you are, but again, through seeing your doctor they can point you out to things like that. Um, if you are having a really, really bad time, there's people you can phone like the Samaritans. And I will put the number below for the Samaritans down there just in case it ever was something you might need. Um, but there are certainly a lot of Facebook groups as well, like I'm in a few fibromyalgia Facebook groups and I found that as well has made a massive difference because a lot of people on there are quite open about their anxiety and their depression so it gives you the option to talk to people 
that aren't going to judge about it because they're going through pretty much the same thing as what you are. Um, and all I can say is just try not to beat yourself up about the fact that you are depressed because the brain is so complex that it, it would be completely irrational to think that our brain could only ever be wired to be happy and not be anxious and not depressed. Yet really, there's so much going on. It could be the smallest of worries that just if you leave it and it builds and builds, it's going to become massive for you and no one else can really help you get rid of that. You have to want to change it a little bit as well. Um, that's certainly one thing I've found. If you're not willing to try things and just look at it in a horrible judgmental way you're not gonna try and take it in um at all it's just gonna you're just gonna get annoyed by it and think it's not for me it's rubbish and actually you might if you give it a chance it might be really helpful and you might feel fantastic for doing it um and the final tip i would give in terms of dealing with anxiety is through pain management we were taught a lot of mindfulness practices it's a lot like meditation and i have to say there's been one or two moments where i've found it really come in handy actually in fact one day when i was going to a pain management session i was stood on the main road waiting for the bus and i had a group of school kids shout out the window at me like calling me a cripple and all sorts and i was only stood at the bus stop with my walking stick that was it and normally i'd have just turned straight around and gone home i was so upset i was angry there was so many things all at once like how dare these little teenagers stand there and judge me they don't even know me or my situation and all they've got to say is cripple and you know then the anger kicked in and i was thinking well <laughs> if they were down here they wouldn't be saying it and it was so odd to go from that extreme to that and I sort of stood there took a moment I just did one of the breathing exercises and luckily the bus came so I got on it and I went to my session and yes my anxiety levels were so high that day and I didn't say very much in the session but I'd made it and that was the whole point if I hadn't have done the little breathing exercise I'd have just gone home and cried all day and it, it just isn't worth it because why should I have let those children just stop me from developing something for myself? So, yeah, give meditations a go. There are loads of them on YouTube. If you like, I can find some. If there are so many videos you can get on YouTube, meditate, guided meditations and things like that if you're fairly new to it. And I will leave the links for them in the description box as well because um, I find they're really quite nice, especially of an evening once you've done everything you need to do. Just put it on and just give yourself that five ten minutes to just zone out from everything and just relax a little bit that's pretty much everything i have this week in terms of help and guidance for anxiety and depression because i'm still fairly new to it and i'm not the best at dealing with it at times either um i don't ever claim to be at all um but i think one of the biggest steps is definitely admitting it to yourself don't just think i'll be okay i'm just being miserable if you're feeling like that for quite a while there's a good chance that you probably are suffering with depression and it, that's okay it, it's allowed <laughs> it's not a problem and there are ways of getting help about it so if there's anything in particular you would like to see next week get in touch you can get in touch through facebook twitter and instagram i keep forgetting i have these three that's really bad <laughs> Yeah, but you can get in touch with me on them three. I will get straight back to you. And I hope you're all feeling okay. See you soon, guys. Bye.